It was 2 a.m., a moonless night, dead quiet for Shibuya, near Tokyo. Unsettling. Ken wore a black hoodie as he sneaked through the narrow lanes in the neighborhood. His heart pounded in his chest, a mix of excitement and fear. Every sense was heightened as he scanned his surroundings, ensuring no one was watching. No one was aware of his presence. He knew exactly which house he was looking for. He knew exactly what he needed to do. Murder the father of Yumi, the woman he wanted to marry. Ken slipped into Hiroshi's house, his heart pounding in his ears. He smelled the faint scent of Hiroshi's aftershave mixed with the musty odor of old books. As he crept through the house, the floorboards creaked under his weight, making him pause with every sound. He found Hiroshi deep asleep in his bedroom, alone, snoring. Perfect, Ken thought to himself. Moonlight spilled through a crack in the curtains, casting a pale light across Hiroshi's unsuspecting face. Standing beside Hiroshi's bed, he tilted his head and thought, you old fool. Then, with a sudden rush of adrenaline, Ken acted. He moved quickly and silently, the deed done before Hiroshi could even stir. The room was eerily quiet, except for Ken's heavy breathing. He looked down at Hiroshi, a wave of nausea and triumph washing over him blood everywhere. Ken hastily ruffled through the drawers, making the scene look like a burglary. He then slipped out of the house, the cool night air hitting his face. He showed no remorse for his action. All he could think of was the beautiful future with Yumi. After Hiroshi's murder, Ken seamlessly slipped into the role of Yumi's confidant. She was vulnerable, grieving, and he was there for her, a shoulder to lean on, a comforting presence. The police investigation went nowhere, just as Ken had planned. His act had been flawless, leaving no trace of his involvement. Ken's relationship with Yumi deepened as they spent more time together. They got married soon after. Ken felt a sense of achievement. Marrying Yumi had elevated his social status, but he wanted more. He wanted the kind of wealth that Yumi's family couldn't give him. However, the arrival of Mina a friend from Yumi's university days changed everything. Mina was everything that Ken aspired to. Her elegance, her status, her effortless entry into high society. As she became a regular part of their lives, Ken found himself captivated by her. Ken's fixation slowly shifted from Yumi to Mina. He began to imagine a new future, one where he was part of Mina's world basking in the privileges and status it offered. The murder of Hiroshi was a distant fact, a mere stepping stone in Ken's relentless pursuit of upward mobility. Ken's eyes now fixated on a life with Mina. The two began a secret affair. Their relationship, hidden under a veil of deceit, grew rapidly. As Ken found himself falling deeper for Mina, he realized that his life with Yumi was a barrier to the future he now craved. Driven by this newfound desire, Ken devised a sinister plan to get rid of Yumi. He got this rare, potent substance under the guise of a luxurious face cream, believing it would slowly poison her. But the night Yumi applied the cream, the horror unfolded in a way Ken hadn't anticipated. Yumi smiled as she opened the gift from Ken. She applied the cream onto her face, expecting nourishment for her skin. Instead, agony erupted. Her screams pierced the quiet of their home as the cream began its evil work. It was as if acid had been poured over her face. Her skin bubbled and tore, flesh peeling away in grotesque strips, exposing raw, bleeding tissue beneath. The pain was unimaginable, her face a rapidly disintegrating mask of horror. Ken watched, frozen in shock and horror as Yumi writhed in agony. Her once beautiful face was now unrecognizable, a grotesque display of the cruelty inflicted by the cream. Her eyes, wide with pain and betrayal, locked onto Ken before she collapsed to the floor, her entire body twitching. Within a minute, 
Yumi died with her eyes open. In the dead of night, he carried Yumi's body to his car, heart pounding with every step. He placed her body in the trunk and drove to a secluded spot by a river in Takasaki, far enough from Shibuya to avoid suspicion, but close enough to get there before sunrise. Arriving at the river, Ken dragged the body to the water's edge. With a final heave, he dumped Yumi's body into the river, watching as the current carried her away. With Yumi gone, Ken focused his future with Mina. Their courtship, now public, quickly led to marriage. Ken had achieved the social ascent he had longed for, standing beside Mina as her husband, seemingly a man reborn. Ken's life with Mina was looking up, but soon enough, weird things started to happen around the house. One night, before bed, Ken was in the bathroom brushing his teeth. He leaned over the sink, his mind wandering. As he raised his head to rinse and glanced in the mirror, what he saw made him jump out of his skin. There, in the reflection, Yumi was standing right behind him. Her face was gruesome, skin torn, dripping with blood, eyes hollow with pain, yet burning with anger. Trembling, Ken turned around, but Yumi's horrifying image was gone. Day after day, night after night, Yumi's mutilated face started to show up everywhere. It had turned Ken's life into a real nightmare. Yumi's screams, those awful sounds she made when the cream burned her, started filling the house. It was like she was right there, screaming in his ear. Ken would wake up in a cold sweat, her screams still echoing around him. Ken started losing it. He started to carry a knife everywhere he went for protection. He was nervous all the time, jumping at shadows. Mina noticed he was acting weird, but couldn't figure out why. She thought maybe he was just stressed out. But the worst was yet to come. Ken woke up in the middle of the night. He opened his eyes. Instead of Mina, it was Yumi on the other side of the bed. Her face looked like a horror movie, all mangled and angry. Freaked out, Ken took out his knife and started stabbing. Each stab was to the chest, fierce, insane. Finally, her body stopped moving. Ken began to regain some sense. He finally looked at the face. He stopped breathing. What he saw couldn't possibly be. The face wasn't Yumi's. It was Mina's. He had killed Mina. The ticket to wealth and status, now gone. His mind was struggling to process what he had done. Ken stood beside the bed, frozen. Mina's body lay in front of him, lifeless. The room was silent, except for Ken's heavy, panicked breathing. He looked at his hands, stained with Mina's blood, his mind struggling to process what he had done. Ken's world crumbled around him. The walls of the room seemed to close in, trapping him with the horror of his actions. Yumi's laughter, once a haunting echo in his mind, now roared in his ears, a cruel reminder of the tragic path he had chosen. In a daze, Ken left the house. He walked aimlessly through the streets of Shibuya, his mind a blur of guilt, fear, and despair. Yumi's face, both the mutilated version and the one he had once loved, haunted him at every turn. The city lights blurred into a kaleidoscope of colors, reflecting his fractured state of mind. Eventually, Ken found himself on the outskirts of the city, near the same river where he had disposed of Yumi's body. The water flowed quietly, indifferent to the turmoil within him. As he stood there, the weight of his sins heavy on his soul, Ken made a decision. There was no escaping the ghost of his past, no future for him now, not after what he had done. With one last look at the night sky, Ken stepped forward, letting himself fall into the dark, cold embrace of the river. As he sank, Ken's thoughts were a mix of relief and despair. Relief that his tormented journey was ending and despair for the love and life he had destroyed. The river carried him away, just as it had carried Yumi. In the depths of those waters, Ken's story came to an end, swallowed by the darkness he had created. 